detail. With me in the studio is Robin Haynes. He's from the currency trader, Currency Index. And also in San Diego, we're joined by Jay Shaw from the firm Coinville. I gather we've got a few problems in trying to get communication with Jay in uh, San Diego. Uh, but let's start um, with Robin here. Um, let's just explain to you, what is a digital currency? Let's get a bit more detail on what it is, how it works. Uh, my understanding of the digital currency really is it's a mechanism for be people to be able to pay money in to a, a system uh, and buy a, a currency that only exists in the online world. That money can then be transferred between different users within that, uh, that online network and then cashed out at another point in another currency somewhere else uh, across the world. Okay, we've got Jay who's just appearing. I hope you can hear me. Jay, can you hear me in San Diego? Yeah, can hear you. Yeah, um, give me an idea. Well, what is the advantage of having a digital currency? Why don't we, why aren't we content with dollars and pounds? Well, the advantage of having a digital currency is simply cost savings and convenience. If I want to send you money via Bitcoin or a similar digital currency, uh, right now with Bitcoin, it'll cost me about 10 cents. Uh, if I want to send you dollars or pounds or any other kind of fiat via wire transfer, it's currently going to cost me about 100 bucks. So it's a severe disparity in cost. Okay, so Robin, what's wrong with that? Well, it sounds beautiful. That's a very good system for smaller payments, actually, um, and that's correct where the transfer charge is, is the most important part of the transaction. Um, once you're sending larger amounts of money, which uh, has clearly been the case of Liberty Reserve, then the cost of the transfer compared to the amount you're sending it, is irrelevant. So really, these, these systems should only be used for small payments. There's no need for them to exist for larger payments when you, you need to pay a supplier in dollars or pay for a, a house in France. There's no need for it. Jay, what do you say to that? Oh, well, actually, I, I have to disagree wholeheartedly. I specialize in large payments. Uh, I, I've dealt with payments to the tune of millions of dollars uh, simply using Bitcoin. And the beauty of the protocol of Bitcoin is that it's irreversible and it's a community ledger. So the network itself knows if a payment is valid or not. And the, the convenience factor is also a major, major draw for systems like this. Uh, if I were to engage in a normal U.S. dollar-based transaction, I would have to keep a credit card on file, and then I would have to incur wire transfer fees. And as you say, for large transfers, it can appear negligible, but if you're doing a lot of large transfers and uh, doing a lot of international commerce, it can add up very quickly. Jay, um, just uh, before you answer that, I just want to get onto the sort of darker side of this about what's been happening. The problem is it's completely unregulated. We don't know who's doing this, where the money's coming, who's put the money in, and all the rest of it. The regulators are beginning to stamp down on this. Are they going to destroy the digital currencies by doing that and the convenience which you talk about, or are they actually just going to get rid of the bad guys? 